Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Wayne Mike's Positively Technical World video review. Today we're going to be having a look at the works WX742.9. This is uh, part of the Maker X series and what it is is an airbrush quite obviously. But it's an airbrush with a built-in compressor. Uh, it's also what's known as a, a single action. So you push down and it gives you air and uh, pull back and then it has a metered needle which goes through. Um, it's made out of a stainless steel material and uh, it has it features a hopper on the top which is approximately five milliliters of uh of paint i suppose <laughs> or material we wish to spray um it's very very ergonomic and it's pretty cool come down here and have a look and we'll uh take a closer look at it together okay guys now you know a bit a bit closer up you've got a bit better lighting as well here is the uh wx742.9 uh, it's part of the maker x range so you obviously need your Maker X hub. They have an umbilical cord connection that goes into the back of it. And you've got three pins. One of those is negative and one of those is variable speed power. And one of them is fixed um, voltage power. This particular version is gonna be a fixed voltage version because of course it's very nature. And uh, then you have your hub which is just here. Uh, I've got it connected to a four amp battery, can easily take two amp batteries and last approximately, uh, I think it's 90 minutes, mathematically speaking anyway. Only draws about 0.1 amp. Um, and uh, yeah, it's very, very economical, uh, especially when it comes to battery. So a four amp is a bit overkill, but it's what I use in all my videos. So therefore um, it stays. Um, so we're gonna be having a look at this. Um, but first of all, we need test subjects. And on this channel, we always like to try and remain uh, real, if you like, when it comes to it. So we're gonna go off, um, well, actually, first of all, we're gonna have a look at what's included in the box. You get the, uh, the sprayer included in the box. And it comes apart for easy cleaning from the compressor side of it. So that way you've got your, uh, your spare, uh, your individual um, air compressor piece here. And uh, it does actually come apart in various different pieces. You can see here the base unscrews from it. You've got a small nut inside there, which isn't actually officially user serviceable, but we'll overlook that bit. I think with that, I think it actually can screw onto the standard cans of paint, um, cans of paint, cans of air uh, that are available for them as well. Have to look into that, but how it is at the moment, it works perfectly fine. So why alter it? Uh, inside, you can completely take it apart for ease of cleaning. You can take the nozzle off of there. And that reveals the needle. Obviously be very careful of sticking yourself because it's incredibly sharp. And uh, then you can take off end piece. And then you've got the very, very small uh, nut on the end there that you can include, I think it's a three millimeter spanner that goes onto there. And then you can actually take off the needle assembly and actually strip it right the way down for cleaning. I'm not going to do that on camera because it's incredibly fiddly and I'll probably end up stabbing myself on camera. So let's not do that. If you do decide to do that, please ensure you wear decent health and safety gloves. Um, the adjuster for the um, amount of fluid coming out of the uh, hopper, which is there, is uh, adjusted here. You can see it limits how far uh, open the gate, if you like, will, or the tap can open. You open this up and the top can come further back. Obviously you can vary that by your own finger notion when it's actually in hand. And you've got it around the right direction where you actually use it like that. Um, it's very, very ergonomic and very, very good to use. Uh, it's got very, very good spring action to it. And it feels very, very nice and balanced in the hand as well. Obviously some people can hold it like that. Obviously you've got bigger hands. If you've got small hands, prefer the more petite sort of thing. You can just use a thumb and forefinger. Um, it's quite well balanced, like I said, even with the umbilical cord attached to it. But of course that leads a bit of a question and a bit of a challenge as well. Uh, sorry, there's a, a brush for cleaning out the insides. And obviously the little spanner as well. There is also a small pipette, but I've lost mine, so we're going to be using a small syringe, medical syringe. Um, but of course, that leads to the fact being that we need a challenge for it to uh, take on, if you like. 
and uh, that's going to come in the form of mm. this. So here we go. Here's the uh, the problem. Uh, some very rusty windscreen wipers. So what we're going to do? I'm going to pop that cap off. That cap off. And then we're just going to grab our trusty works WX292 and just undo that one, put that there, undo that one, and then hopefully lift and separate, just like that. Of course there's always going to be one that ain't going to lift and separate as easily. A bit of brute force and it finally comes off. So, here you can see the wiper on, despite only being seven or eight years old, is very badly rusted. So we're going to give it a new lease of life, we're going to clean it up and uh, yeah, going to repaint it, make it look nice. The rest of the car is actually in quite good condition. Okay, so we've got our two windscreen wiper arms. Like I said these are actually in quite shabby condition, all things considered. Um, I'm just going to get a cloth. I'm just going to try and dry off any residual moisture off of them because it's a little bit rainy out there. I mean, you could, in all fairness, just rub that back with some wet and dry. I don't see much fun in that, if I'm honest. Um, you're much better off getting a works tool. This I'm going to use the Works WX741. Uh, uh, this is the um, brushless um, angled grinder, quite literally. It's an angle head grinder. Uh, it takes 50 mil discs and uh, it's got one of the original 80 grit flat discs on it. I think it should be perfectly fine for just buffing off the rust. You could also use a rust eater of some description if you really wanted to, but I'm pretty happy just using this is going to be fine. We're running it obviously in the flat out setting and on this you have a power on off button on the side and uh, let's go for it. Yeah so what we're going to do is we're going to mix some paint and um, really for the purpose of this um, we need to just have a, we're going to be painting it in a humbrol enamel tinler um, these are the standard ones that have been around for decades literally um, well ever since I was a kid I think my father and his father's 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 father etc um, we're going to be thinning it down you need to thin obviously paint down to work in the airbrush so we're just going to give it a good old shake and um, then we need to stir it afterwards as well so we need a smaller screwdriver than a large screwdriver because of course it's a very small delicate lid um, and you don't want to end up denting them. It came off actually incredibly easy I thought. And uh, These are still enamel so you do still need to stir the sediment in the bottom of the tinlet. I think Humble recently went through um, a bit of hard times with regards to the composition of some of their paints but as far as I'm concerned this stuff is all good I'm just going to put that in a bit of rag on the side there get rid of the rustings and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to open the thinners we're just going to do a mix basically an in syringe mix so what we're actually going to do is we're going to see what the composition of it's like <laughs> into the cup um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw up uh, one mil of paint and then I'm going to just um, trying to think the best way to do this. I don't really want to contaminate the uh, the thinners. It's always a bad thing when you get your thinners and it's 
got a load of goop in it. So I'm just going to wipe the tip of the syringe. There we go. And uh, I'm just going to draw up two mil, that's a 50 50 mix. I actually originally thought maybe a 6630 might do it. What I'm just going to do is just draw that back a bit and just give it a bit of a general shake. Because of the suction, the way the nozzle's done on this, it shouldn't back feed into it, which it hasn't. Thank God. And basically we're just trying to get the viscosity correct that it'll still flow through freely. I tried to say that after a few. Um, actually, I think I'm actually going to go for a slightly thicker mix. The reason behind that is it's better to have too thin a mix than it is too thick. So I'm just going to increase that. Probably got too much there. As I said, it's easy to go too thick than it is too thin. This is the hardest part, really, about using the airbrush. So I'm just going to draw it back off the nozzle. A little shake. And then I'm just going to squirt a little bit, a few drops. About two mil. That's all it should need. Um, I'm gonna put this to one side. So I've got some more in the uh, in the tank, if you like, for later. Put that on the screwdriver one side. Put the cap back on the thinners. It's about five pounds for a bottle of thinners these days, so let's not waste them. I'm gonna put the cap on top here, and. Um, I'm just going to turn this on. The actual um, air compressor itself is incredibly quiet. Uh, it only generates around about 60 decibels of sound, which is incredibly quiet comparatively. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to test fire it, if you like, on this piece of cardboard before we go heavy handed. I'm just going to have a quick. I'm no artist, by the way, but uh, let's just try doing that. Nice. Not too bad, it's a nice feel as well. Um, I feel like I've got plenty of control over it. Um, I don't really want to get my lazy Susan mucky. So I'll stick it over there. I'm just gonna use this bit of a backing spray really. Just see, it might not actually take, because it might be too thin to actually take on the uh, on the car, or on the car, on the metal. Sometimes it does require a bit more glutinous um, format. Let's just try and bring it around the right side of the camera. It's really difficult to always film and do stuff like this. I found that when doing the soldering iron video, but. I'm just going to aim for a very light coat. Lots of light coats make nice, easy work. So 
actually incredibly difficult to actually see where you've actually sprayed this as well. A bit weird. It's too shiny. Check on the level. Plenty of reservoir paint left. I said I'm no Pablo Macasso chop your ear off bloke. Who was that anyway? Was that Picasso? He's the only eyes I know. When it comes to cleaning out your WX741 um, it's really quite simple. All you need to do is take a piece of rag cloth or kitchen paper, as it's more commonly known, and you just take it and just clean the parts very therapeutically. See that got a bit of splash around there, and then just take a syringe of the thinner for the paint you've used. Obviously, if you're using water-based paints, you can use water. I've used enamel based, enamel based paint, so I use enamel thinners. What we do, we just have a nice, careful go round. Of course, it's stainless steel, so it's relatively easy to clean. Relatively little sticks to it. There's the cap nice and clean. I'm not going to do it too deep but this is the fun bit if you like. So all we do is just put our thinner, because in this case it's enamel thinner in there. It'll turn a beautiful black colour, because of course that's the colour of the paint we've been using. We're just going to pop the lid on, give it a quick swill, and uh, turn it on. And uh, then we're going to do some graffiti, quite literally. We're just going to get the board, and we're just going to spray it out. For the pure thinners, the thinners are going to take any contaminated paint. You just want to run it flat out, as flat out as basically you can get it. So just wind that screw back a little bit further than what you'd normally. And you should find that very little paint comes out. Instead, you're left with this residue-like finish. Hopefully, we'll open this. You can see in there, as near as makes no difference, completely empty. I'm just going to run a second bit of flush through this. Just a mill or so. Just to make sure I've got everything. I'm pretty sure I have. So I'll just leave it over and open. Obviously with a liquid like this, you will actually be able to watch, hopefully if I can get you to focus on this, you'll be able to almost see
the liquid draining down. And you should have been able to see the haze in front of it as well. Obviously that haze is extremely flammable, so please ensure that you do not have any open sources of potential ignition there whilst using it. I'm just going to disconnect it from here. And I'm just going to tape a little bit of paper rag. And clean that. If you really want to be pernickety and find detail, you can unscrew it. And then you can also just use your small brush that you got with it. Just have a quick poke around in there. Just going to unscrew this back piece. Stay. Remove the end piece and the cartridge. The slider. Front piece, primary front piece, secondary front piece. Then remove the needle. Obviously be extremely careful not to spike yourself with this. If you do, doctors please, because you don't want to have to go through um, getting a tetanus. And although I'm not going to remove this end piece, you can quite obviously see it's nice and clean and assembly is just reverse. I've taken it apart. Somebody's exactly the same as taking it apart. We're just going to put the push it make sure we're really the right way around. Or was it the right way around? So the rear part has got a locating slider on it. We'll just make sure the locating slider slides into its home position. Then we're going to take this, re-slide it into the back, re-pop on the rear piece, just ensuring that it locates nicely through the end. You can always unscrew it if not. We need to also put on the retaining ring at the back. Screw on.
put the front piece on primary front piece first and the secondary front shield which is like a splatter guard we're just going to give the splatter guard a little bit of a clean out using the small brush That's good enough for my liking. As I say, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate. And then just reattach the cup, as it's called. And the cap for the cup. And just make sure it's still. adequately works okay so just make sure that obviously the needle comes straight through you need to make sure that you can see the end come on there we go you should be able to see the needle poke out very tip you see it and then you lock that in place and you should see the very tip of the needle appear and disappear when you pull that action. Okay, just make sure that's done up nice and tight. Because if not, you're gonna have issues. And then all this does is just stops the needle coming back. One of the key indicators that your needle is not correct. Is it will leak so when you put some fluid in it put some of my wonderful thinners in white spirit does work just as well but I'm an old school modeler so I use the real deal <laughs> hence the reason I only ever use Humbrol base paints I think Ravel the German counterpart um, is good they're all enamel paints, they're all the same. Doesn't matter where else you buy them from. No leaks from the end, unless I want a leak. And it variates exactly as it should. And there you go that's obviously done a strip down for you guys i've um, cleaned it i've used it i've demonstrated it and hopefully the wife has got some uh, nice shiny new looking um, windscreen wiper arms that aren't rusty anymore so there you have it guys so ladies and gentlemen the works wx742 what do i think of it what my thoughts well, it's an airbrush and it works. <laughs> I You can't really turn around and argue at the end of the day. It's very functional. It does exactly what it should. Um, it works on the Maker X platform, so I didn't really cover the hub that much in the beginning, but it's got the same platform. Basically, you can get a soldering iron, a blowtorch. It's like a heat gun blowtorch. Um, heat shrink. You also get a zip snip as well, which is really cool. And you also get the mini angle grinder that I featured earlier in the uh, video as well. A small... Um, What's it called? Uh, like a Dremel die grinder sort of uh, affair. And uh, also you can get a, um, a blower as well, which is very cool, and a glue gun. Uh, I think there's seven in total um, um, extras you can get for it. And it's, it's really worthwhile, obviously. You can see in the background here, I've been having hiding away. Um, the two, which obviously I got, I got the originally the, um, the die grinder and then I got the die grinder with the soldering iron just because it was so cheap I just thought you know why the hell not um, you can get obviously all different variations of the kits but um, like I said as far as an airbrush goes this is just as good as the old Aztec that I used to have I used to have an A430 I think it was called it wasn't the real posh metal version 
but that costs like £180. I think nowadays it's more like up to like £250. It's ridiculous. Um, but obviously the uh, Aztec ones, they're used by uh, Royal Dalton, as well as many other crafters and model makers. Um, but yeah, this for an all-rounder, considering all the extra pieces that it does as well. Uh, the fact being it's got a very decent constant air supply at 30 psi out of there um, it is 30 psi i have checked this um, on a pressure gauge and it's very constant 30 psi it's very boring to have a look at didn't really want to cover it in here because we've already got other bits and pieces to look at but um yeah it's also non-variable speed and it, it just works it's, it's, it's a very very good um airbrush really obviously if you've already got the works uh, maker uh, x platform it's going to be extremely good to uh add, add to basically your collection uh, i think the price of this at the moment is 59 pounds and 99 pence i will try and put a link if i can find one um for it obviously in the description and we'll try to do that more and more obviously the more the videos i'm doing and uh yeah i hope you guys like this video and i shall see you in the next video um soon cheers